Recently we've launched a couple of websites that really have caught some attention and it's been because of this alternating block layout. And so I wanna take a few moments of your time to introduce you to that and show you how we've implemented that and give you a little secret special source CSS that we use to make it happen. Hey, I'm Ryan from Hello Hudson. Thanks so much for tuning in. So as mentioned, recently we've launched a couple of sites with these alternating post layouts. And as you can see here on our agency site, hellohudson.com.au, we use them to showcase simply our projects. This is all done using an Elemental plugin called Anywhere Elemental Pro, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It's got some really great tools in there, and they've really moved with the times as Elemental has changed and developed over the years. And we've stuck with it because it's been great to create additional things where you're not locked into certain layouts with what, what Elemental provides. And there's nothing wrong with those, but as a designer and developer, I'm always conscious to not be limited to what is out of the box. And so I'm always looking to create something fresh, create something new. And this alternating post layout is, is simply just a really nice alternate way to display your posts or your custom post types that's just not in the standard grid. And so here's the website that I've just been working on for one of my clients. Um, but what we've done here, just as a little bit of a design feature, and this is what we're gonna show you towards the end of this video, is how we've implemented a simple number on, on each of these. So the, the number's got nothing to do with the post, but it's just a design feature. You've probably seen it around on, on a few different sites. And I just really wanted to do something a little bit different just as a design element on those posts. Towards the end of this tutorial, I'll show you how we've done that. So let's check it out. I'm gonna show you how really easy this is to actually achieve, and it's gonna add that little bit extra to your design. So what we're gonna do is first check out um, a little bit about how Anywhere Elemental Pro creates these blocks. So what we need to do is create two separate blocks, one for the, I call them like odd layout and one for the, the even layout. So being our odd numbers, the first one is gonna have the image on the left with the text on the right and the, the even layout is gonna be the opposite of that. So image on the right, text on the left. And from there, we can then put this into our template and then have a bit of a play with this CSS. So here's the template that we're working with and we're gonna be throwing in our case studies right here. So let's go into our dashboard and you can see down here, I have a custom post type called case studies. And just quickly go in here to show you, we've created four really simple posts just with some random text and a feature image. And so we're gonna use all of these elements to create our layouts. So let's go into Anywhere Elemental Templates and go Add New. In here, we're gonna be creating two block layouts. One is gonna be, as I said before, our odd, and one is gonna be our even. So this first one, we're gonna call our case study block odd Now the render mode here needs to be block layout and then we can preview one of our posts here by um, we'll put in lights camera action we're going to change our template also to be elemental canvas so once we've done all that we can then go and publish our layout and from there we can go into edit with elemental so in elemental we're going to be creating a really simple layout with two columns I'm not gonna to do too much fancy stuff in here, but um, feel free to go to town. But I'm gonna create a two column layout here. And in this first column, firstly, I'm gonna make it full width so that it gets controlled by the width of my template as opposed to here. I wanna go in and add in our feature image. Go in and add as the background to that column. Anyway, Elemental Pro has the ability to actually show the dynamic background here. And it just seems to render a little bit nicer using this technique as opposed to using the feature image when doing these alternating blocks. And from there, we're just gonna change the layout of our image. So background size cover, um, position, we're gonna go center, center. And then we might just add a spacer to ensure the height of our image. So that's that one. And then with our other column, I'm thinking I might go with a just a black background for this other column just to give it a bit of contrast. And then our text will be in white. And that's looking fine for now. But what I wanna do here is just add that little bit of off-center layout. So to do that, we're just gonna add a bit of um, margin. And then what we're gonna do, once we have, once we're happy with that, um, and you can play around with that until your heart is content, we're gonna create now our even layout. And so an easy way to obviously do this is just copy what we've got here and, and create the other one by um, just switching them around. So while I'm here, I'm gonna copy this layout. 
So now we simply need to adjust those margins and padding just so that it all sits a bit nicer. And so I'm gonna quickly do that. Now we can come back to our main layout and edit that with Elementor. So now we're gonna use our block element, anywhere Elementor post blocks, throw that in here. So first we need to select our source, which is gonna be case studies. And then we're gonna select our post layout. So I'm gonna select our odd one to begin with. And then that's gonna show um, obviously a grid of them looking disgusting to begin with, but we're gonna make a few more changes in the layout down here. So this is where the layout mode, they've got some really great different options here. But to achieve what we wanted to do here, we're gonna use a checkerboard layout with only one column. And then when we have checkerboard selected, here we have alternate post layout. And this is where we select our even. And you'll see straight away, we get our layout. So now we just need to add a bit of spacing between them and that's already looking really quite good. So let's update that. And we're gonna preview our page and see how it looks. So it's starting to look not too bad. And again, you would go in and play with all the settings, which I'm not gonna to be too concerned with right now. And you've also got to worry about your responsive layouts where this can get a little bit tricky with those overlapping elements when going into mobile views. And so you need to be careful with how you work with your margins, your padding, so that you're not cutting off any lettering and that kind of thing. So I tend to, with this kind of layout on tablet view and on mobile view, switch it back to simply um, image and then content below. So now what we're gonna do is using that bit of custom CSS to add that number count for each of these posts or the, these case studies. And it's simply just aesthetics. It's, it's just there to look nice as a design element. Now to do that, we need to create a, in a way like a hidden element that we can then target with CSS. And then we use the pseudo selector to add the content of that number. So I'm gonna show you how to do that um, very quickly, but there is a little bit of understanding on how we actually target each of those elements in our page structure that we can then add an incremental number to. So firstly, we need to come in and add our empty element into our blocks. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a span element that we're gonna give a class called number. And then we can style this. So let's just put in here 01. Another thing what we wanna do is make the positioning absolute so that our text kind of overlaps it. And then with our positioning, we're gonna simply add some negative values here so that we can see it pop out the side a little bit there. I think that's looking pretty good. So what we wanna do now is get rid of the text. But with Elementor, what it seems to do, or what it did for me anyway, is if you have an element on the page that actually has nothing in it, it removes it from your page layout. Um, which is, I guess, is a good thing, but we don't want this to be removed. We want it to be there. So I'm going to add in the HTML code for a space, which is ampersand NBSP with a semicolon after it. Now that means there is some content in this span and so it's not going to disappear from our page. Once we've got that done, I'm going to copy that element. I'm just going to give it a name here, number, copy that, go to our even layout and paste it in there and just move it up to the top. So now we need to have a quick look at the HTML of our page to determine this CSS selector that we're gonna use. Now, it can't be just any span, as I said before, because we don't wanna just have every span on the page having numbers, who knows how many there are. So what we need to determine is the selector we can use, which is within our post block layout that is repetitive within that. So we should be able to find within some kind of container in our HTML, we will see the post block element and then from in there, we should see, currently we've got four case studies, we should see the one, two, three, four of those. And then within each of those, we will be able to see our span with the class number on it. So that's what we're trying to target. So if we come back to our page, we're gonna refresh, and I'm gonna inspect our H2 element for one of these post blocks. And then obviously just above that, we should be able to find our span element. So I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. So it looks like I actually selected our span to begin with. So there's our span, our blank character in it. And then we'll find the parent of this will have our number class somewhere there. So number is right there. So if we go up here a little bit further, we can see each of these post blocks has a parent of an article. So that's exactly what we want. So what we want to be able to do is target article class AE post list item. So from there, we can go in and target our number class, which has the span within it 
and then we're gonna use the pseudo selector of that to add our counter to it. So I'm gonna go back to our page layout here and I'm gonna simply add some of this custom CSS to our post block element. So in a way we're gonna create a counter and to do that we're gonna use the CSS parameter counter reset and then we're gonna call it CS for case studies counter. And now to target our selectors. So we know we've got our article and then within there we've got our custom class number and then within that is the span element which we're targeting. So we're gonna go article dot, now the custom class for those, each of those articles was AE post list item. And then number span. And here all we're doing is we're gonna begin incrementing our counter. So counter increment and we're calling our custom counter CS counter. And then finally from there, we can use this same selector to target our pseudo element of the span, which we're gonna use before. And in that, all we're doing is now adding our number to the content of that pseudo element, CS counter. And now when I've added that, you can see that our number has appeared. One, two, three, four. But a little trick to getting that leading zero, which is just a nice touch, is decimal leading zero. And that is how we get that custom number. Now what I did on my page, which is another little feature you might want to do, and I'll quickly go through that, is adding a outline. So to give these numbers our outline, we're simply going to use the target that we already have here. And I'm going to override our color to be transparent. And we might need to use important to override that. And then we're gonna use just this WebKit text stroke width. I'll make it two pixels. And then WebKit text stroke color. And I'm gonna try 20% white. But I think that looks all right. So let's reload our page. And there you go, a custom layout using alternate blocks with a little bit of custom CSS to make it a bit special. But you know, go crazy with your styling and have fun with that. Again, I really like just being able to stretch the bounds of any tool that, that we're given and just so that we're not restrained to the parameters of, of what it might be. And I think it's all about just thinking outside the box and getting inspiration from elsewhere and then doing what you can to, to make it work for you. And so that's it for today. I really hope you've got something out of that and it's inspired you to, to do something great. I'd really love to see what you're doing. So maybe add a comment below. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please do, you know what to do. I really wanna continue making videos like this just so that it is inspiring you to do greater things as we build a better web together. So once again, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.